Welcome, David Wiss here, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition and Recovery. Today we're going to talk about vaping and e-cigs. Vaping, e-cigs, Juul, Chuck and Clouds, whatever you want to call it, it's a hot topic in the research world. It's been looked at from a couple different angles and we'll cover a few of those briefly today. Uh, the well-known NHANES data set showed that e-cig use was more common among young people, those with lower socioeconomic status, and current and former smokers. So it's no surprise that there's a link between uh, cigarettes and vape, and that's bi-directional. The bigger question today is, how is vape linked to appetite, weight loss, and eating disorders? In this particular sample of 459 adults, it was found that nearly 14% reported vaping to lose or control their weight, and of those, they were more likely to vape frequently, be overweight, restrict calories, and have poor impulse control. Uh, this study suggested several reasons why one might turn towards vaping. One is an appetite suppressant effect. It does curb cravings for sweets. Uh, it can distract or substitute eating, so there's the oral fixation, hand-to-mouth thing going on. There's a ton of really appealing flavors out there that mimic alcoholic beverages, candies, desserts. They've actually gotten very creative. And many people might rely on the flavors to manage their cravings, so it tricks their body into thinking they're munching or snacking. One participant said, when I feel like binging, I just vape a flavor close to my craving. Now, you could see how this could start to be alarming to those of us in the eating disorder world. Even more alarming is when vape-like devices are marketed as a diet aid. So they're essentially saying nicotine boosts your metabolic rate, don't choose caloric foods, choose these seemingly caloric flavors. And my guess is that uh, people do buy into this kind of stuff. Um, as a practitioner, I've seen a large percentage of uh, those with eating disorders engage in the vaping. This study looked exactly at that. It showed that those that reported an ED did endorse vaping motives consistent with eating pathology. So using substances to induce weight loss, compensatory behaviors that were hidden. Uh, those in this study were more likely to vape daily to use higher nicotine concentrations, suggesting that treatment providers should really take a look at uh, e-cig use in clients seeking ED treatment. You can see here differences in those that had a current ED versus those that never did. Um, you could see that the uh, e-cig use is higher in the ED population, and there's several statistically significant odds ratios reported. Um, you could see here that those that uh, currently had an ED were nearly four times um, the odds of vaping compared to those that didn't. So this is a trend that is worth knowing about if you work in behavioral health. This study didn't look at eating disorders, but did look at weight status in a uh, adolescent population in Texas, a pretty large data set. It shows that there was a positive relationship between weight. Um, this is both cigarettes and e-cigs for boys, but not for girls. Um, considering the possibility that um, using cigs as a weight control method could appeal more to girls versus boys, because girls might suffer greater negative social consequences from being overweight or obese. So I would say from this, it's important to know that any relationships that are true around body image, weight, food, is not just a thing for one gender. This is a thing for people now, both males and females. We need a lot more information. How does vaping impact our taste buds? How does cigarette smoke, how do the flavors from the e-cig change the oral microbiome? These are things that have not been studied. How does the vaping flavors impact detection of flavor in the brain? As a behavioral health nutritionist, these are things that I'm often interested in. Someone who vapes a lot or smokes a lot might need more flavor, quote unquote, on their food, adding more salt, being dissatisfied with bland food, etc. How does vaping impact addiction like neurocircuitry? And where is all this headed? What's the next data going to show? What's the next trend that's coming our way? I'm certainly interested. I don't have all the answers, but I do have some of the good questions. If you have questions or you have some opinions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.